If you're serious about growing your business, you need to be collecting emails from potential clients and customers. One of the best ways to do this is going to be with landing pages. We can use them for a million different things. I'm seeing so many entrepreneurs right now um, turn to really expensive, monthly payment, clunky solutions with limited options that don't really fit your brand and leave you struggling more than they help. Today, I want to show you one of my favorite tools for building beautiful, well-converting landing pages without paying for a monthly service or looking like everybody else's landing pages. Using Beaver Builder, we're going to be able to quickly and easily build landing pages on your own domain um, that really enhance your brand and most importantly, convert for your business. Be sure to watch all the way to the end of the video because I have some great bonus downloads um, that will help you build these amazing landed pages even faster. Today I'm going to demo one of my very, very favorite tools for building WordPress websites, which is Beaver Builder. Now, if you haven't tried Beaver Builder before, um, get ready to have your mind blown. It's amazing. Um, we really like to use their whole suite of products, Beaver Builder, Beaver Theme, and Beaver Themer with our clients' websites. It gives us a lot of flexibility and a lot of scalability. Um, but today we're going to be working with just the Beaver Builder plugin. So it's just um, their kind of lowest level or most basic offering is um, the plugin. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to build um, a landing page that looks like this um, right there in your WordPress website. So you won't need any additional software besides your email provider. You won't need lead pages. You won't need click funnels, nothing like that. So the first thing that we're going to do um, is we're going to go ahead and I'm going to leave this one here just as our example um, is, but we're going to go ahead and we're going to create a new page. So I'm going to add a new page. I'm going to call it landing page demo. Um, it's, you know, whatever you want to call your landing page. And then I'm going to come over here to page attributes and template. Now, this is the part that might vary depending on what theme you're using. Here we're using the Beaver theme, um, but you can do this with any template, anything that you may have. Um, for it to be a true landing page, um, we don't want our header and our footer to show, and that way we get all the focus on, um, on just the subscription part. So what we're going to do is um, here we're going to select the no header, no footer template. Now, most of your themes will come with something like that. So if you're using um, something like Divi, a Genesis theme, um, most frameworks are going to have an option for a no header, no footer template. Um, if not, just get with your designer um, or your developer. They can really quickly make you a template um, so that you can do this um, without a header and without a footer. If all else fails, just do it with the header and footer on there. It's not a big deal. Um, and it, you know, it might not be a true landing page, but you'll still be able to make it work in a pitch. So once we've done that, we're going to go ahead and hit publish. And then we're going to come over here and instead of using the text editor for this page, we're going to use page builder. Now I like to describe page builder as page builder is basically takes, um, WordPress and turns it into Squarespace for control freaks. It's like it's so easy to use, um, but it really lets you have that minute level of control that you don't necessarily get on Squarespace. So what we're gonna do is come here um, and we're gonna start with a blank layout template. Now there's a lot of templates um, you can choose. You can scroll through um, landing pages that they have pre-built. You've got content pages. And if you stay tuned to the end of this video, we're gonna give you a couple of um, landing page templates straight from the Magnolia House team that you can use on your own sites. Um, but for now, we're going to start with um, just a blank landing page. I want to show you how to do this from scratch. So here's our page. Like we said, there's no header, there's no footer, um, and right now we've got exactly nothing on our page. So the first thing we need to do is add a row. Um, and you can see our landing page here is all in one row. So we're going to go ahead, we're going to add content, and we're going to take a one column row layout and drag and drop it here. So this is going to be the basics of our page. 
Next thing we need to do is set up our row so that it's gonna work for us. So we're gonna come here, we're gonna go to row, we're gonna click on row settings. And there's a few settings we wanna do to make sure we get this beautiful um, background photo. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna change it to full width. And we're going to leave our uh, content at fixed width, and that's going to give us some nice margin between the edges of our page and our content. Now, since we want the background to go from the top to the bottom, we're going to change our height to a full height row. Um, and we'll leave our content alignment at center, but you could change it to top or bottom depending on what you wanted for your page. All of this is so easy to customize. Um, we're going to leave the rest of these settings in place except background. So we're going to come down here and we're going to change our background type from none to photo. Now again, you could use a video here, you could use a color, um, you could do a parallax photo, which is always really fun, um, slideshow, whatever you wanted to do. There's a lot of options. So the next thing we'll do is we'll grab our photo and luckily we've got this beautiful image from Hannah Browning, one of our fabulous team members. She shot this um, and we're going to go ahead and use that as our background. So um, we'll just, you know, fix that there. We'll hit save and step one is complete. We've got a beautiful background. Next up, we're going to um, build the background for our actual content. So we've got the row as a whole. Now we're gonna grab this column and the column is gonna be how we're gonna separate um, our content from our page. So we're gonna come in here to our column settings. Now remember, we've got a one column row. So if you had two columns, you could do this column by column. And we're gonna go ahead and um, uh, change a couple of things here. So we're going to change um, our background type. It's already selected as color, but there's no color chosen. So we're going to go in here. I've got some color presets, so I'm going to choose white. But if you didn't have your color presets, you can pick them from here or type in your hex code. And I'm going to make it about 70% um, opaque. So we want to see some of that beautiful photo shine, beautiful photo shine through, and um, but not too much. We want it to be really, really readable because remember, you know, a confused visitor is not a converting visitor. Um, so we're going to do that. Then we want to play with some of the spacing and the padding around our um, landing page or around our content. So we're going to make a couple of changes here. I want to give it some margins on the left and the right side. Now my screen is pretty big here, but as we zoom in on a smaller screen, I want to make sure that we're not bumping into the edges of the page. So on the left and the right side, I'm going to give it um, about 50 pixels of padding on each side or uh, of margins on each side. So you'll see See, when I did that, um, the, the two sides kind of came in 50-50. Now, for our padding, um, we also want to make sure we don't want our content to be rubbing up against the edges of our borders. We want to give it lots of white space, um, really let it breathe. So for our padding, we're going to give it 50 pixels on top, 50 on bottom, and I'm going to give it 100 left and right. I just really want to take advantage of a lot of white space. Um, and so we're going to set that up, and we will hit save. Perfect. Okay. Um, next, now it's time we can go ahead and actually add some content. So the first thing I'm going to add is a heading. I'm going to hover that right over there. Um, and our heading is get on our amazing list is great. Um, and we're going to come over to the style tab and really customize it. So this is your, you know, your choices. You can actually drag and drop that wherever um, if you want to make sure that you can see it. So we're going to want to center this and we're going to change it to our, um, our H1 style. So you can see um, that it is uh, what am I trying to say? It's um, it's now you know bumped up. So one of the things that's really great about doing it this way is on your custom website, you or your designer or your developer has already um, outlined all of the CSS that you need for your website. You've got your styles, your paragraph styles, your header styles, your colors. All of that is already set. And so these pages are going to fit in. They're going to adapt to whatever your designer has already chosen for your brand and chosen for your business. So you don't have to, um, you don't have to wrestle with it and you don't have to make something that's kind of template-y, kind of clunky, kind of dated looking. You don't have to try to make that fit with your brand um, because you're using your own site, your own styles already there.
Um, now the font here, it's the right font, but I want to make it italic to match our demo. So we're going to come down here. It's actually um, Playfair display. You can see um, with Beaver, everything comes built in. So you've got a lot of choices. Let's see, bold and ultra bold. We don't have um, the italic, so we'll do that a different way. Um, other, everything else looks pretty good. We're going to leave it as is. We're going to hit save. So we've added our heading. Um, now, one of the things we can do here is um, we have a tool we can add layout CSS. So if you want to change some CSS um, for just your layout, but you don't want to mess with your whole theme style sheet, you can make your designer, you make your developer very happy. They probably don't want you digging around in there. Um, is you can come over here and um, grab layout CSS and make changes right on your layout. So here we're going to say we're going to make our H1s. Um, we're going to just do a little basic CSS. If this is complicated, just skip this part. Just rely on what your designer has already set up for your website. Um, but we're going to make this font style italic. Cool. And we'll save that. This is H1, so it applied. Good to go. Next up, we want to add our body copy. So um, we're going to hop over here and we're just going to grab a text editor. Now you'll recognize this. This is basically the text editor from WordPress, so it's really easy to use. I'm going to just grab our uh, sample text there, bring it on over here, um, and then we'll just center it to, um, you know, kind of line it up on the page and get rid of there's an extra space there. Okay, cool. So we've got our information now um, from our headline and... Um, our body text we've got um, built in here. So we're gonna go ahead and we'll save that. And now finally, we just need to add our subscribe form. And this is the thing I think that makes me the most excited with Beaver Builder is um, it's really easy to integrate. We use ConvertKit at Magnolia House. There's a lot of other you know, options, MailChimp, different things like that. Um, and this really makes it seamless to use instead of, um, Instead of just ma making you, you know, build a form, customize it one place, customize it another place, copy code, paste code, fix the errors, um, this lets you keep everything just like really cohesive. So we're going to come from advanced modules and we're going to come down to subscribe form. We're going to pop that right there and we're going to get this kind of ugly looking subscribe form. Um, and what we want to do with our subscribe form is we want to, um, first we want to make sure that we're hooking it up to our service. So we're going to choose convert kit. I've already got it integrated. So, um, if this is the first time you're using, you may get asked for your API code. Um, you can find that in the back end of whatever email provider you're going to use. Um, and I'm going to choose that I want the Magnolia House one because I've got, again, I've got that already connected and I'll choose um, a some particular piece that I want. Okay, perfect. Um, down here we've got more choices so we can have it e, uh, show up as either inline, uh, which is a great option for some designs, or stacked like we've got here. Um, and then you can decide if you want to show or hide the first name. A lot of people like to hide the first name to make it even easier to convert. I personally like to show it because um, I like to be able to have that flexibility and, and address that, um, address my uh, email newsletter readers by name. Um, and then finally here, um, we're going to choose our success message or our success action. Um, so I'm just going to leave it as the, the default for now, but you can put whatever you want here. Um, and you can also redirect to another page. So that's a really, really fabulous option there is, is being able to redirect. Um, one thing that's uh, one thing that I really like to do here is actually in the confirmation message, um, you can add links to different files. So this is another way to um, give out content upgrades. So if you don't want to have to deal with on the back end of ConvertKit or the back end of Mailchimp is especially hard dealing with um, those content upgrades, you can just pop them here. So then people they enter their email address and they immediately get the download. They're not waiting around for um, your email to come later. Um, so that's one of the, the really fun things I like to do here. We'll do, we'll do a video about that another time. Um, but next up, I want to come to our button. Um, so we're going to come to our button. It says subscribe. We're good with that. Um, obviously, you can change it to whatever you want. Um, in my example, I've got a nice black button. So I'm going to come here. 
and I'm going to make it black. Um, we'll leave it. Now here you might want to put a hover color. So if you wanted it to, you know, hover gray, um, that would be fine too. Whatever colors, you know, whatever colors are on brand for you is perfect. We're going to leave it flat. Um, and then we're going to come down here and we're going to lose the round corners. So we're going to actually make these zero pixel corners, um, or zero pixels round. So that's going to be a square edge. I like to do that on all of my buttons. I think it just looks a lot more chic, um, and a lot more modern. We don't want those kind of funky rounded edges. Um, so we're going to do that. And then the last thing I want to do is this is pretty wide. So I want to make it a little bit more narrow. Um, so I'm going to come over to the advanced settings here and I'm just going to add a little bit of a margin. So I'm going to add 100 pixels on the left and 100 pixels on the right. And that's going to give us, um, make this just a little bit smaller and um, just a little bit less about the sign up for. So we're going to do that and we're going to hit save. And then we'll hit done and that will let us publish our changes. Now at this point, we're pretty darn close to done. We've built it, we've got the hover, we've got everything we wanted in there. The only thing that's different is our subscribe button text is a little bit, is styled a little bit differently. Um, now what it's gonna do with Beaver is it's gonna pull just your body text style. If that's what you want, no problem. If, however, um, you want a slightly, um, you a little bit more style to that text, um, you can build that into your CSS style sheet, or you can go ahead and actually build that um, right in your layout. So we're gonna use this CSS tool again that we used on our header. We're gonna come back to layout CSS slash JavaScript, um, and we're gonna come down here. Now we're gonna do like a lightning fast <laughs> CSS lesson. This is guess and check is how you learn CSS. Um, we're going to have our, um, our CSS property we're going to see from here is FL button. Got that there. Okay, cool. Now we just need to style up that text so that it looks, um, the way we want it to. So, um, in this one, we're going to go font family, not Sarah. Um, we could do something like text transform uppercase, make it all uppercase, and open up that letter spacing a little bit. Now again, if this is beyond your comfort level, no worries, you don't have to do it there. Um, but if you're comfortable playing with a little bit of CSS, that's kind of a fun opportunity to make things different. Um, once you've done that, you'll hit save, and done and we are finished so in like five minutes you've got a brand new landing page it's going to look different from everyone else's and it's going to have your brand already infused and best of all you're not paying 30 or 50 or 100 dollars a month to use this it's a one-time purchase um, and you can build it into your existing website so um we love that now, as a bonus for y'all, if you want to get started with some Beaver Builder um, landing pages, we have put together a couple of options. So we'll give you the template for this one and a few other templates. Um, so just click below um, and you can download the, um, the templates and get started making your own Beaver Builder pages. We're so excited to see um, what y'all do with it. So be sure to um, share on Instagram, on Facebook, give us a tag so that we can see um, the landing pages that you guys are able to build.